Hello and welcome back to the second stage of Sir YAML. Uh, it's Byron speaking. Second stage because we are actually still in the process of setting up the repository to have something we can work with. The main blocker right now seems to be that I'm unable to use cert macros um, here with my local setup. As my Rust nightly is too new, I just updated this and um, five days ago there was a change that makes all the macro stuff basically fail and there has not been update since an update since and yeah that's where I, where I am right now uh, cert code again doesn't work because some type mismatch occurs here and to be honest I have no idea uh, what it wants to tell me <laughs> I mean it tells me right but I have no idea how to fix that that's above uh, what I'm willing to invest here in time. So I just, uh, would prefer to work around, but let's let's go step by step. First of all, we have some, uh, we wanna finish the transfer of information. We have two milestones here. Uh, so let's add these real quick. So there's serialization support, which is the first one I would like, serialization support. And then this is this JSON compatible white space. Let's just keep it like that. Okay. And then there's deserialization support. Another one, deserialization support. I guess this is this one. Cool. And then Serialized structure, YAML staff, fill in docs. So these I could just transfer now. And I guess I should. Um, just because, you know, I added them for a reason, even though this one will need to be adjusted now. <laughs> Yay. So that one is now that one. Here we go. GitHub link to file. Does that work? Oh yeah, and I want to fork this guy as well. Um, so let's do two things. I want to keep my fork of third. I think that does make sense. I want to kill my YAML implementation so far because there is not much in it anyway. Third YAML, you know this YAML branch here, git push mine. Let's kick that and git checkout master and git branch delete forcefully. YAML, so, oh yeah, so that changed. So now this could actually work, cert, do it, kick it away. This also means we can actually remove all these milestones here because they do make no sense. It should be enough to just uh, disable the issues feature here to silently get rid of them. See, so that works nicely. Cool. And I also think that I probably want to YAML deletion of current branches. Ah, I see. Makes sense. Makes sense because I changed the default branch to YAML. That should now be master though. And there we go. So I can try that again. And git push mine master. Let's update mine with the latest version. That worked because I pulled the latest from origin already, but didn't push it into my clone yet. And there we go. Awesome. So now I should have 585 commits or 584. That's exactly what was expected. Good. So here we are clean now. That's very nice. Um, we have the milestones, insert YAML, we don't have the <laughs> the issues yet. And I was dummy, not, well, I, fortunately I didn't delete them just yet. I can just enable them again and migrate them. So let's do this one first because that's easier. Serialize a structure YAML style. I reserve the right to add more details later, uh, but actually thinking about it, I don't want to have these features, these issues here. I want to have the milestones and then work with PRs, right? So what I have to do is fork this guy and add the stuff using PRs. And then I just go one after another. And that's the cool thing here. That's the cool thing. Uh, so yeah, 
what would I would uh, what would I want to start with? Uh, I think testing, right? I want to be able to test stuff. That's the first thing. Um, which is here allow testing of serialization output. This is the first PR I would like to make. And what's the workflow now? Well, now first of all, oh look, that sucks a bit, huh? I think repositories should should have a prefix because if you now clone stuff, it's just called YAML, which is not good. Um, how how does Piston does it do, um, do it? Because Piston is split up into many sub-repositories and they also just use uh, piston examples, OpenGL graphics. Yeah, they don't really use a prefix either. No. So well, that's how it is then. Short names. Fine, fine, fine. Good. Let me do it like that. <sighs> Good. Oh, here it is. Good remote at mine and here is my one oh, get config let's change the upstream tracking branch it's gonna track oh come on I hate it it's gonna track mine oh, slug oh interesting I didn't know it does that it's kind of new, maybe. Okay. So here we are. So I think that's the setup. And all I would have to do now <laughs> is to set up the respective PRs. And I, yeah, I can work on master. Can I, but I can't make one just uh, if it's empty, right? If there's nothing to... Yeah. So if the, there's no change yet, so that's a bit annoying because a new PR will be an issue in the target or in the source repository and the one that I that is my parent, that one. But I can't just set it up bl um, blindly. I have to... I need a commit first that kind of initializes this, which is... Shitty. I could have an issue in the target and then have a PR that finally closes this issue. There's something I could do. And I think that's that's how it wants to be done uh, to work. You know what? And I will just I will just do this. I will just try to get this to work so that I can test something now um, and disable them here right away. Why not? So now we are in. We are clear here. And third, uh, I think I can have a look at the original and set up the issue here. So that's going to be the first issue, right? Um, set up test facilities, set up serialization, basic setup for for serialization testing, like so. And the milestone should be serialization support. Awesome, so that's the setup and then I can just work, start working on it, make a PR and then refer to that PR. When referring to the PR now, I will have to use full URLs though. I can't just use um, numbers, any just normal numbers anymore because they will just be resolved to my local um, repository even though I'm not sure if it's if there's a way to refer to the fork um, to fork uh, to the issue on the in the forked repository hmm maybe there is one uh, maybe oops PRs issues new show me the markdown Maybe this works by now, I have no idea. What is markdown, lists, images, code? Yeah, well, I use that, extras. 
syntax guide where can you link to issues is there anything task list tables sha references okay okay so that's that's probably a short way ah that's how that works so that's how i could in a short fashion refer to um the parent issue mojumbo Cool. So I could say cert rs one, and then this will return uh, will refer to cert rs yaml one. I think that's what I was looking for. Okay. So that's how, that's something I have to remember f myself. Uh, didn't I just create one here? Did I not? I thought I did, and I did indeed do that. Okay. Good, so now let's try to get testing to work. I mean, I've been failing ungracefully uh, because I tried to use cert macros, but maybe I want to use syntax right away. So I will try it again, right? I will try syntax once again. Uh, and no nightly support. So let's do this. Um, override nightly. And now it should uh, simplify, uh, be simplified a lot provided, oops, no, no, provided I can find this blog post again. Yeah, so that's the parent, that's my fork, I think I will, oh no, sorry, that's my fork, I think I will keep both open and now I just want to look up how this syntax stuff was working again. Oh, actually, I could just go to OAuth. For OAuth 2, it doesn't work for some reason, even though it's expected expected to work. Even though it's expected to work on stable. But maybe it works for for a super simple case. Maybe something in Yap OAuth that doesn't like, you know. So I would try it again, actually. But I would simplify it. So let's actually look up the issue again that is blocked here because that links to this blog post, which I shall use to try it one more time. So this, so this is how we would want to have it, right? So that's the lib rs. And that's librs in. So maybe it doesn't work because librs in doesn't contain. Oh yeah, maybe this is it. Maybe it really needs this to be in librs in because it doesn't get. It doesn't work if it if you import modules or something. Maybe that's the problem here. You know, because he shows it only like that, even though that is highly unrealistic. No one puts stuff in librs. That's not rusty, and it doesn't work for bigger projects anyway. It's not a good idea. Um, but I thought it was just to keep the example simple, right? And yeah, so far, I mean, it, it has written something. It just uh, didn't work uh, to the full extent. Anyway, let's try that. Also, it should only be handled for test cases, right? Because only in test mode, I will even even use that. So that could be another cause for failure anyway. So build dependencies, syntax, and code gen dependencies assert, yeah. So I, I think this is the stuff that I would kick out here. Oh no, wait, we are in Yap OAuth 2. Let's get back to YAML, which probably looks equally evil. Build dependencies like that. That goes away, that goes away. I have no interest in dealing with that anymore. So let's try again. Good, now we need a build file that doesn't do any anything special. Uh, that's gonna be build rs.
and that should just work like that nice uh, except for cargo tommel which also needs this build script right like that yay build rs okay so that is something here and now this should well it should soon work first <laughs> I will have to put, I have to structure my library to do anything at least. So the serialization part, for instance. Um, so this libRS, right, that is just going to be renamed. Good move, source libRS. That's now libRS, uh, source lib, oh, come on. libRS.in. And there is going to be a new source lib rs file. Oh well. Um, I think this one. Also doesn't need to use extern create, right? Yeah, I think that's also part maybe that's also oh, come on. Damn it. Maybe that's also something that uh, I got wrong the first time. So here we go with extern create cert. I wonder. Yeah, probably the documentation wants to be elsewhere, huh? I think documentation. Yeah, so that doesn't want to be here. But I want to get the sir module and then I will use some stuff from there but for now mod sir should already make it fail or not mm, fine so that's how that could look like of course we shouldn't forget to actually include this one I like to include macro it's interesting to say to say the least all right like that so possibly something happens now. Let's see. I'm I'm curious. Because sir doesn't do much, right? Sir is just using cert and doesn't have a test yet. So it should just work. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it fails again because reasons. Maybe it's because it really wants something in the lib. I will try that. Uh, I will definitely try that, but yeah. Uh, let's try to use cargo cargo build actually cargo build should do nothing else here yeah 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 we are on oh multi rust toolchain set to nightly really no multi rust override stable that's the whole idea Hence time I override stuff always has to rebuild a lot then. And always the question of will it work or does it fail somewhere? I kind of forgot. I think nightly doesn't work because of um, API changes. And this one doesn't work. Stable doesn't work because build RS will fail. But maybe it works now. Who knows? And considering this example is as simple as it gets, I should make it get it to work and maybe that will help me to get Yap OAuth to work as well to finally solve this problem. Maybe, maybe. Third. So according to my process monitor here, It's once again actually building syntax syntax. So I think yeah, I, I don't know what what's happening here. I don't know what why it tells me that it's building cert even though it's still busy building uh, syntax. And also, only one Rust C process seems to be active right now. So yeah, I'm not not sure what's happening here. But anyway, hmm. 
Hmm. Oh my god, it's so terrible. These compile times, honestly, it's crazy. It goes on my nerves. Let's read something something nice <laughs> in the meanwhile. <laughs> Rust C versus C++ performance over path tracer. That's interesting. So far, uh, Rust, Rust was slower, way slower. It actually also degenerated. So that's 13 minutes for G++, and that's 12 minutes. Wow, it's actually faster. Nice. Pretty impressive. The Rust version is actually a tiny bit faster than C++ version. I double checked that both the Rust C and C++ version use all CPUs on the machine too. If anything, C++ compiler settings I use are more generous than those the LLVM backend is using for Rust. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, so looking at my little ray tracer implementation, uh, actually C++ is 15% faster, which previously was only like 10% faster. So the latest version did introduce some sort of artifact there, some sort of regression for me at least. So that's nice. Let's give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Calendar example challenge. Did anyone do this by now? <laughs> huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, there is a group by IDA tools, group by interesting. And that's and that's the uh, implementation. <laughs> oh, for, <laughs> if you're willing to just turn everything into a vec or a string as you go, but that really isn't the spirit of the problem. For reference, this is the D equivalent, really. Not bad. Okay, auto, that's the return type, huh? So that's cool to have an auto return type. Isn't even as efficient as the D version. Instead of generating subsequences lazily, it dumps them into VACS because I just gave up trying to make that work. If you want to see this kind of hideous evil you need to do that, check out group by. Uh. <laughs> That's interesting, interesting problem here. Straight up massacres, look at that. But it's really the auto return type. If you would be able to specify an auto type here, this would um, totally work. I mean, the code wouldn't look much worse than D, even though D is still nice and clean. Very nice and very clean. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Oh yeah, it's true. I still have my local override here, which doesn't work on stable. I shall get rid of that. Um, get check out head minus one. Uh, yeah, I think I'd rather reset this guy to the latest version, or maybe not even override it. You know what? Let's set it here and uh, remove the override. I will do this in a separate shell here. Oops. 
cargo config and the rust aster override should be should be going away yeah so now i hope it doesn't have to rebuild everything just aster the latest one that works so no constness field here And with a little bit of luck, we get further third code gain that failed last time. And I think it should should work on stable third code gain. I guess that's the one that syntax or that uses syntax to make it work. Somehow, is this still loading? Oops, no. Or did it just not come up? There we go. So something happened. Oh, look at that. Cool. Look. Look, 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 look. It actually did something. It, it worked. It didn't fail. It worked, awesome, that's very nice. So it can work, right? Even though there is nothing here. Let's try yup OAuth one more time. Yup OAuth 2. So which one is this? <laughs> Multi-Rust show override. That is on stable, that's good. And I think the problem here was that this entire thing is actually not, or that the build script is failing. Yup, OAuth, here we are. Uh, let's check the librs in because I think I might be, I might be getting third even though I don't, I shouldn't do that librs, see. So I'm not on nightly now. So cargo test should just work. And here I have the more complex setup right away. So I think I want to remove cert here because it would be a duplicate. Maybe that works better now? No. No, it does not. Could be related to something that is happening here. I don't know. Maybe it's hypermock. Let's delete. Oh yeah, let's, let's take the documentation and put it here because I think here it wants to live here it wants to be still no success I mean it didn't yet try to build that thing it's still the build RS script that fails and it's a question uh, what makes it fail here okay so that's now worked Good. So that worked. Something in here makes it fail. So I can basically now just try to find it. Oh, look. So device seems to work. Device and refresh seems to work. Device and coming seems to work. device and helper. Okay, so helper appears to be crashing it, huh? And if I kill this, oops. Actually, I didn't intend to do this right now, but, oh look, awesome. So it's helper, it's something in helper that makes it crash. Okay, so now we can go dig in basically and uh, see what this is. What if we don't use anything, but only use mod? Okay, so the, the mod part is the problem here. So in here, we might be doing something that it doesn't like. So what if we kill everything? Is it one of the users here? Okay, so it could be one of the users. Maybe it's the super stuff that happens. 
we go up and down again and okay so it's not the super stuff that happens is it the test cases we are running cargo tests let's use cargo build instead okay cargo build actually works for some reason so let's kick the test cases maybe that is something good still fails test cases not is not the problem so then the only thing that should possibly make it fail and yeah i'm digressing kind of but also not really because that is a standing issue that i have uh, i probably shouldn't do it yeah probably i should abort this and say well oh look i might have not tested this properly so that should still fail yes that should still fail yes at least it fails quickly that's good so where is serialize serialize there's not even there is no cert here maybe maybe this is the problem that there is no cert and that's that's why it kind of fails it doesn't real it doesn't doesn't really want that let's have let's have something in here that requires cert what about that what do you say now yeah, still a problem. It still doesn't like it. Well, what is the problem then? Let's just go from the bottom here and kick out things until it works. Okay. Something here. Authenticator delegate. That seems to be the, the culprit, huh? Yep. Authenticator delegate it doesn't like. Uh, okay, so let's take out functions here that it you know I probably it probably doesn't understand the est of something. Maybe because a few of these guys are empty. And this is why it fails. Uh, let's find the one that is that it doesn't like. Wow. So what's the, what's the issue here? The last one, the print line stuff. Oh now now. Oh now it is a syntax error. Okay, but this is not a syntax error, right? No, good. So if I, oh yeah, true, you have to kill all the documentation now. Okay, interesting. So is it maybe the documentation that it doesn't like? It shouldn't care about it, but the functions didn't seem to be the issue. The methods, sorry, so let's kick all of this out I wonder what the problem is still panic so it's not the documentation I probably ignores that anyway it should ignore it so let's start from the top problem not solved yet I wonder why it can't handle this straight man Nope. It doesn't like it. it. Just doesn't like it. Maybe maybe what I'm doing is total nonsense anyway. So an empty trade does it work or can I just say it's like this? Okay. So it doesn't like empty trades. Okay, we have been that far. So that worked. Yeah, well. I'm I'm not sure. The only thing I do, well, let's just say that in the moment I delete this one, it kind of works better, huh? Look, it is this one. This is the function that it doesn't like. So now the question, 
Is it maybe the documentation here that it doesn't like? <laughs> nope, it's not that. That's good. So we are we are we have something here. That's awesome. So just an empty function. Basically let let this be five. So now it's not empty anymore. There's at least one item in there. Still doesn't change anything. Now it works. Awesome. Awesome. So test doesn't, but test doesn't necessarily need to work. Uh, here we can still use nightly, which also fails because of the, the other issues that we have, not to forget. But apparently it strongly dislikes these lines. Does, does the line break make a difference? Shouldn't be, huh? We are on syntax level here. So it's being parsed into a syntax tree and then... So which line is it? Which line does it not like? So that's not the one. Huh. So are you telling me that it... that this line doesn't like? Whoa! Awesome. So I could also remove this thing here, right? And it's still, yeah. So that's the one, but I can also remove this one. No, actually that's not the case. So that's, that's the culprit here. It does not like this one. So now again, the question, does the line matter? I might've tried that already. I know that doesn't matter. Well, interesting. Nice. So cargo build now works. Unfortunately, we can't run the tests anymore. <laughs> but uh, that's a good thing. GitHub, link to file. Has no upstream branch really. Um, huh. If this line is added. Syntax fails to work. Line is commented in. Yeah, so that's the one. So let's push this. Ah, I renamed this file or something. I can't read. Actually, everything is supposed to be staged already, huh? So what's the deal here? Does it mean that... Ah, see, now this doesn't work anymore. So whenever it says copied here, uh, Sublime get fails. Can I update packages somehow? Can you do this for me, please? In the meanwhile, I shall do this on the command line. So that's now my my way of digressing here. But it's kind of all related because it's third related hassle and bah. Jesus. Five, five crosses in my calendar once I can test something simple here. But it's a step forward. Syntax kind of works now and we might get around with just using stable. I like that a lot. So fix... Syntax, it works. Clean up, clean up, syntax, um, build works on stable. It seems it doesn't like one line in particular. 
let's link to that. Oops, not not that one. Oh yeah, I couldn't copy that line yet. Helper RS uh, 450 something. Helper RS 450, which causes syntax to crash. Commenting it out does the trick. Yeah, I, I will. I will update the respective uh, bug uh, or issue in syntax accordingly. So let's let's push this. Let's try to push it here to get the upstream set up. Thank you. And now I should also be able to copy this. GitHub copy link to file. Now I should be able to do this. GitHub, yep, OAuth. Yeah, could have jumped to issues right away. Here we go. Uh, I tracked down the exact line. If it is removed, syntax will work. Yeah. Let's see what I have copied here. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, for now this should be should be sufficient. The exact line. Uh, causing the issue. If it is removed, syntax will work. Work. Have a look at an excerpt of the source. Yeah, well, let's just say the excerpt, the following excerpt, source excerpt is just for completeness. So, what do we have here? This should go four to the left. One, two, three, four. Da da da. -da. Not of them but just three we go with rust and can probably say something like pub trade authenticator delegate and then give it a few thingies here and like that so that should kind of work and that is that so yes it can it can actually work awesome yeah, so I will will uh, finish this a bit later. I would like to have this line, obviously, and I'm not sure what the problem really is. Um, but anyway, that is also means that I should be able to um, to see this output file here. Is this temporary or is it still there? Um, out, huh? Here it is, librs. So how big is that? 117, let's open it up. Elsewhere, how does it look? So no comments in here. As I'm not sure what cargo, cargo doc does now. <laughs> Build fail, that was fast. So maybe now it doesn't actually, or you know, cargo doc still needs to work. What? Could not document lazy static? Are you kidding me? Either lazy static still has to fail or it is actually about to work. Yeah, but let's have a look at what this thing creates here. Apparently the documentation is missing. The docs I have, I don't see them, but you know, I wouldn't judge, judge that too early. Yeah, so basically here is all the other all code that we need to do the serialization and deserialization. It's massive. I didn't expect it to be that massive. But yeah, well, just a few structs here and they take up the majority of the code. 
Uh, also, it was relatively fast. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it was too slow here. Anyway, so that will. That's better. That's an improvement. Let's have a look at Sir Yaml, which also worked for us. Oh look, it even keeps the comments here. That's awesome. Except for the librs comments, which are not in here for some reason. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, yaml. If we can make something work here. So this already did something. It just has a few warnings. We might want to bring this up. Because right now there is no testing going on at all. Does cargo test work here? Yes, it does. Except for the fact that there is no test yet. Mod sir. Oh look, it kind of includes it here. And it builds a massive library that contains all the all the code. I see. I see. I slowly begin to understand <laughs> how all this works. Good. Libris in just puts stuff together. What does cargo doc say? That's kind of the small version of the test that we, we do here, right? Will also take a long time, unfortunately. So yeah, let's try to use this. How would I use this? I should be able to have a test module here. Mod test. Oops, no, not like this. And I should be able to say, well, CFG test only, thank you. So now this is my area for unit tests. And now I I can do derive ser serialize. Now that's the one, so derive serialize. <laughs> and say, well, it's going to be a struct. Oh my god, my computer is dying here because of all the compilation going on in the background. Compile, compile times, honestly, I'm, whenever I think of it, I am annoyed. It's hard to work around, you know, you just, you must do other things. Worst case, read Reddit. Um, best case, I don't know what the best case is. Best case, yeah, I do know, do some actual work. So, struct, let's do something very simple. Uh, well, let's call it data. <laughs> and then we have X, which is an F32. Y, which is an F. And yeah, let's, let's try it. F32, F64. Let's try all the standard data structures. Why not, huh? Should be possible. The nesting, nested data structures shouldn't make a difference because that's already covered is really about the data types here. Uh, integers, i32, i32, i64, i64, u32, u32, u64, u64. I got on the standard data, data types, I suppose. And I also would like to see uh, how tests are done in other cases, you know. But for now, I would just do my own thing just for just to get the infrastructure ready, right? That's not supposed to be a real super great test. So string is a string here, and then we might have an uh, an i32 array, which is um, yeah, I think it's a vector. It's a vector, huh? It's a vector of i32, and last but not least, a hash map. So use std collections hash hash map. Yeah, like this. Let's try. So it's string to data, string to other data structures maybe. And also I want to have default implemented. Thank you. Because I don't really care about these values. So yeah, let's let's have, have our own structure recursively in there. So um, 
hash show you hash map of a string and data thank you that should be it that far okay so that did something does open now work no open still doesn't work yeah why why would it be that's also stable i think that's part of the problem here right now because there's still a silly bug that yeah anyway uh, if you have um dashes within your name it will not work for obvious reasons it builds the wrong path but anyway i should be able to open this manually target doc yup oauth index ah look that actually works cool so the the documentation works as expected that's very nice to see i'm happy makes me very very happy i didn't expect that at all i kind of expected evil bugginess everywhere um Oh, I edited the wrong file. No, wait, I didn't. No, wait, I, I think I, I think I did edit the wrong file. Oh crap! All right, let's do this quickly. <laughs> so dumb. Anyway, I assume this, this works and. This should actually work here. Thank you. Awesome, so that works. I just, oh, I can undo this. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah, here we go. So now that's the right file. Here we go with unit tests. Let's add a test quickly. Mm. Serialization. Uh, let let d be um, data default, and now I should be able to serialize that if I use this to string, right? Let's use it. Um, to string pretty, I could use just for the fun of it. I will change this interface anyway, but let's get something to work here. Um, yeah, let's try to let's try to build it just for the fun of it because that could cargo test this could actually work. Uh, well, it didn't it didn't run this one. Does it always overwrite the same file here, or is it? Oops, was it different every time? I won't need that for now, nor that, nor that, nor that, or that, or that. So, yeah, didn't put it in. Uh, could this be could this be an issue that it now doesn't kind of rebuild these things, even though it should? Yeah, look at that. It didn't rebuild it. Why? Ah, uh, well, can it be that it doesn't figure out changes anymore now? Oh, now it's compiling it. Running zero tests. Why does it run zero tests? Excuse me. It should run this one. Uh... Maybe I got my mod pub mod test does need to be public config test. Maybe it needs to be public. Well, <sighs> sometimes I'm I'm a bit disappointed about myself, but I think it shouldn't need to be public. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, it seems it, it skips the tests. There is no... This stuff isn't here, so if I do not put it here, what happens? Okay, then it runs it. So basically, it doesn't run, it, it probably doesn't get the flags that it needs to, to work or something. Uh, which is odd. Maybe unit tests don't work with that. Maybe I have to use integration test style, even though I would love to have unit tests. But anyway, let's let's try it, huh? Let's try it. New folder, tests, and new file, tests, sir. Yeah, I think I will just call it sir.rs. So, extern create cert yaml as yaml. And that should already be it, right? And I think I don't need to exclude it here. This should just work now. Mm -hmm. So let's see if that works better. Cargo tests. Okay. Okay, shit. So in order for that, no wait. Test sir, derive serialized default. It seems that my cargo configuration now doesn't kick in here. It should build third YAML. Oh, wait, 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 no. This is why it doesn't kick in. It doesn't, yeah, does it get executed for this one here? Yeah, because this file doesn't get mangled now, that's a problem. And this is now kind of dependent on information that can't be hard coded anymore. Oh man, I'm losing so much time. Look at look at this time here. Already an hour long and I didn't really get much done. This is just wasting my time. I hope it's a great learning experience that will help me to be better in future. Actually, it's build scripts here. Let's see what we have. Target. Host, num jobs, cargo manifest, dear profile. What about the file that you're interested in? Yeah, it gets only called once. Huh? So, cargo test verbose, what do you say? It unfortunately doesn't tell you uh, or doesn't give you the line uh, that actually runs the build script here. Does the build script run anyway? That's my question. Oops. I'm here. Yeah, let's do it like this. So let's see if the build script works or runs. It seems to compile it. Took a bit longer now. No verbose. I didn't rebuild it. So here I should see the stuff somewhere, probably because it actually tries to compile it. Yeah. So I would expect it to show up here somewhere. Because if the build uh, script finish or changes, it would need to recompile or to re rerun it, right? But here this I'm I'm not sure this didn't happen really. I don't I don't see this one either. Let's change it one more time. And then grab M here. But it if it runs it and it should run it. Yeah, well. 
<laughs> and it should run it, which doesn't seem to happen anyway, then it runs it for the for building the library, but not did I not push this? Oh, the build RS is new, true. Uh, yeah, it runs it for the library, but not for anything else. So long story short, I could have unit tests in theory, but they seem to be swallowed. But I cannot have integration tests that use macros. And I'm not sure how to use integration tests with syntax. And I think, yeah, let's let's get this one. <sighs> yeah, what was the, where was the file again? Uh, the blog post. Here it was. He said something about testing, right? Compile times. Well, whatever. <laughs> Can't get much worse, can it? Ooh, don't say that. Error locations. Well, error locations. What about test cases here? But test cases are not mentioned at all. Damn it. It's uh, not good. Normal workflow doesn't seem to be supported by this, and that annoys the hell out of me. Okay, so that doesn't work. Here we st here we are still. Custom derives don't work, so all this. I think I can remove this right now. This doesn't it doesn't help, and this also doesn't help. Unit tests. How do I, how can I make this work conditionally? And why is it not there? Cargo feature, for each actually activated feature, the package being built, the environment variable will be pr present where name uh, is the feature. For the profile currently being built. So you should be able to query it yet uh, in build RS. This doesn't seem to play to make a difference here. Question is does syntax exclude uh, test stuff explicitly? GitHub syntax. What do you do? Well, how are you tested yourself? Hello world. That's a hello world project, maybe. Hello world macros. What? Maybe that's more like a. Okay. A better test for the library <laughs> itself. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it also doesn't use a test case here. Maybe there's something I can add here. Probably not. Uh, well, I don't know what the difference is between syntax and syntax syntax. That might just be the top level API or something. Create pre expansion passes, feature gate, strip unconfigured items. And may maybe this is where stuff happens. But how add config, add CFG. 
parse meta from source string. Hmm. You know? Here, registry. At CFG. Maybe this is something. I don't know how this is used. Also, it is not shown here. <laughs> Why would it be? But um, is there any any tests for this? Oh man! How do you know that this even works, or that it does not break? Syntax. Do I have this already? I'm not sure. Let's try it. Rust syntax. No. Wow. Apparently, at some point, there has been have been big files in there. A few ones, at least. Cargo test. And I think here there are no tests at all. But I might be wrong about that. Oh man. It sounds interesting. It's code generation framework, good for metaprogramming and all this stuff. It's awesome, basically. But. You know, how do you use it even? Uh, the only way to learn about it is to have a look at the code, I suppose. Okay, so syntax, syntax is usually compiling a long time. So I will not wait for this. And yeah, there are no tests really, I have no idea. The add CFG thingy might be something worth exploring if this is related to the CFG that you want. Add adder, add macro, parse, parse meta from source string. Where is parse coming from, by the way? Syntax, syntax, parse, uh huh. Seems to be a copy of lib syntax, possibly. Parse, here it is. Yeah, so that's a complete lexer. Is this a copy? Okay, so anyway, um, I might want to look for the method name, actually, to have a chance to find this. No, here it is somewhere. Parse meta from source string. Oh look, no matter what happens, config spec to string. So yeah, here I should probably find the syntax that it wants and maybe, oops, maybe this helps. Can I just jump here by clicking the link? Probably that works. Sure thing. Uh, here it is implemented though. Source. So name, that's the one. Ask create config. Uh huh. That's the name. That's the config we pass in. And that shall return a meta item. <sighs> hmm. So that's all the false stuff. New parser from source, parse matter item. Huh. 
I don't know what it does. And I don't know if it helps at all. Config here, this is probably where this is happening, huh? No, wait, that's where it's used. Um, where is it defined? Parse meta item, here it is defined. <laughs> and where is it implemented? That's the trade. Where is the implementation? Here, kind of. Yeah, probably that doesn't help me either. Just the parser, after all. I don't know how it's used. I don't know where it makes any difference. Yeah. Damn it! Yeah, so I wouldn't know how to how to specify this. I have the feeling I could possibly tell it explicitly to use, to not exclude tests here, but damn it. Doc tests. Yeah, if I change this file, oops, just a little. It will rebuild that. No, it didn't. Why did it not do that? It should rebuild it. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Uh, yeah, so syntax does have zero tests. Awesome. Syntax, syntax. Let me guess. Zero tests. Not a single one. Probably it was was tested through hello. Probably that's the one that is all there is to it. Yeah, so here we go. <sighs> I don't know. Should I put it behind a feature gate maybe? So config foo. What happens if I say config foo? That will go away, right? But if I say feature Oh, how are features specified again? I forget that every time. Default, blah, blah. <coughs> features. Features, and now I go with foo. But I actually want to wanna have the... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> dynamic compilation here. Um, I've used that actually before. Where have I used it? I've used it in clap. Yeah, so here the cargo file should... Suggestions, right? So suggestions can have dependencies, but doesn't need them. So then I can probably say config su feature suggestions, this stuff, yeah. So this is how I can test for it. This is what I want. So maybe that way I can work around. Foo is nothing. Foo is an empty list, but it does exist now, so I should be able to to use it. Feature foo. Like that, huh? So that should still kind of work. And now I set foo to be enabled. And nothing. Yeah, it seems that the build script does not know about features at all. Uh, maybe there's some information here. One hour fifteen. Terrible. Uh, huh. Is the recording failing or something? I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. So features, Rust config 
indica indicates that the specific directory will be passed as CFG flag to the compiler. This is often useful for performing compile time detection of various features. Oh yeah, well, this is how you can communicate to cargo. But that shouldn't be relevant, right? I should should set it up as a as a bug because it is a bug to me. Config test. And that's all there is about it. All right, nothing more. Doesn't even need to be pub, I think. Maybe it does, but that's yeah. So yeah, I don't even get the test to work. What the fuck? Not with, not with uh, syntax. And so it macros don't work with my latest compiler. So well, I'm, I'm out of luck here. So for now, what I could do is just. I could just not do this. And it doesn't need to be mod, pub. Yeah. So there is my test. Awesome. Yeah, it's market as to do or something. Um, to do st exert macros work and use CFG tests. Oops. instead or get syntax to work with um, CFG test. Yeah, let's make a new issue here. Sorry, but I think this should work. There should be a way. Maybe there is a way and I just don't know it, but it should be easy enough. GitHub syntax. Go I create CFG test is ignored even if cargo test is used. Um, even though integ integration tests with syntax might be difficult to achieve as they are a separate separate program which needs its own build program configuration. Standard unit tests should work out of the box. However, should work out of the box as they are included if cargo test is run on the library, on the crate, on the crate in question. For some reason, these seem to be, for so some reason, items, um, items with well, CFG, oh, come on, CFG test. Metadata are ignored by 
syntax which makes unit testing impossible as well these items are stripped in the generated um, output file yeah I am not sure why this is and how it is possible to tell syntax to use use the well how to tell syntax that tests should be part of the output um a working workaround is to simply um not use conditional compilation on test items test items or something yeah however yeah nonetheless nonetheless i would be glad if there would be some hint on how to use standard workflows when syntax is involved which might also include include integration testing within integration testing and what I mean with that is files files within the test subdirectory dot rs files within the test subdirectory yeah that's something that's a thing let's see about that here so that is something I shall refer to here and that is that awesome so one hour 22 minutes crazy crazy so all that should be left is to actually use the use super here blah blah and now serialize this to string pretty assert equal to string pretty d is well I don't know let's say foo it's not gonna be foo but I will use the result of the fading test hey why did that not work Unused import? What? Where's the error here? Binary operation, not. Oh, yeah, that's. That's an. Unwrap. What about this? Good. So left is this. I wonder if there's a way to get nicer output. Hmm. Yeah, that just make the output nice. So that should be <laughs> actually no. This one should be that one. Okay, like that, and then. I think now I don't need regular expression anymore. That one should be that one. And there we go. So this is what we get, but what we expect is actually 
Yeah. Actually, we expect this, right? Kinda. Bang, oops. This is the first little tiny test. And this is what I would expect. We have an empty string here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that, that's a root document, right? Somehow. That's kind of, that's kind of what I see here. An empty hash, yeah, why not? It's empty after all. And this will fail for a long, long time now. So that's what it's supposed to be. And that's definitely something we do not get. Excuse me. It doesn't like that string for some reason. Um, oh yeah, because I could use a raw string here. Makes it easier. After all, like this. Yeah, that's a raw string, right? Mm hmm cool. So that's still hard to read, but at least shows what uh, would be expected here. And at some point this might work. You might want to bring it down to, you know, I might want to disable a few things and then add what I need later. Um, yeah, something like that could be could be done. Let's do it like this. Looks shitty. But what can I do if I add this here, then I think I have these tabs in the string. Uh, yeah, there they are. And that's something you don't want either. Okay, so that's the first kind of cheap test. That is good as I get it right now. I hate life because it all is annoying as hell. It's not nice. It's ugly. But that's how the world is right now. And it takes a lot of time to get there just because nothing seems to be working here. That sucks. But anyway, I'm in a bad mood. This really is no fun at all. But I have to live with it and have to hope that eventually this will improve. Fix uh, feet tests. First, uh, yeah, tests, sir. First micro test for serialization. It will fail for a long, long time. As uh, well, so much serialization testing. Well, fail for a long time as it includes quite a few items, a few data types to be serialized. Also, it depends on, yeah. We also didn't generate the destination or the wanted string <laughs> using <laughs> an existing Serializer. Liza, but just made it up. That needs fixing as well. Yeah, ah, uh, well, whatever. Definitely so. That is, uh, yeah, just not nice. Very annoying. <laughs> Look at that. That's the code for serialization here. Ooh. All right. So, yeah, I guess that is it. I shall push this ugliness, push it to mine, and then set up a PR that will eventually fix what needs to be fixed. So here we go, it's there. Uh, create pull request. So that's supposed to fix what? That's supposed to fix basic setup for serialization testing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to. Hmm. 
uh, work in progress. It's an intermediate PR. More work needs to be done to ideally integrate. Ideally, make it easy to obtain desirable output from an existing parser uh, or existing serializer like the pure pure Python one. Yeah, something like that, huh? So it can, why don't I have a milestone here? Weird. Oh, that's my own, that's my own thing here. That's why there is no milestone. So now I'm insert RS. Now I can assign it a milestone, right? Yes, I can. Awesome, I'll assign myself. And I think that's kind of how this can look like. Yeah, I think that's it. And then eventually I can say, well, this closes uh, issue one, and then this is this is it, right? Let's call it related to one. So you kind of have a ticket sorry, like a ticket duplication there, because to get the PR going, I need a ticket or you know something like that. But maybe that's just yeah wrong to say it like that. I don't know. I'll find out. I will get into the workflow. Maybe eventually I will be happy to do it working on this. But right now. I hate life, so thanks for watching and have a great day.